The stock market is one giant prediction machine. Every investor is basically betting on what will happen in the future. But sometimes those predictions turn out to be dead wrong. Take the cruise lines. For most of last year, the conventional wisdom was pretty dire. Sure, the cruise lines might be doing well now, but sooner or later, the industry will roll over, right? Because there's a ton of new capacity coming online. And when those new ships start sailing, every company in the group is going to lose a tremendous amount of pricing power. That bearish narrative held back every stock in the cruise space. There's only one problem. It just doesn't seem to be true. And as the cruise lines keep reporting excellent numbers, their stocks have made an incredible comeback. Just look at Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings, the smallest of the major players with the fastest growth. Late last month, Norwegian delivered an excellent earnings beat, and management gave us some phenomenal guidance for the next quarter and for the full year. Pricing was supposed to collapse, right, as more capacity came along. The company entered 2019 with a record amount of bookings and record prices. Bear's story couldn't have been more wrong, which is why the stock has already moved up more than 30% for 2019. And even up here, Norwegian is only selling for nine times next year's earnings estimates. That's wrong to me. I think it had more room to run. Don't take it from me, though. Let's check in with Frank Del Rio. He's the president and CEO of Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings. Learn more about how his company's doing where it's headed. Mr. Del Rio, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Jim, good to see you. Thank you. You know, Frank, a lot of executives come on our show and they say, hey, listen, you know, our stock is you know, cheap, buyback stock, whatever. You came on and said your stock was wrong. It was wrongly valued. It was wrongly valued because of ships like Bliss. You got a new one coming. Could you just explain to people how everything that, that the bear said was going to come true basically didn't? Well, I think I was back. When would I, was I here last? A few you, months ago. Yeah, but yeah, just a few ago. months. But everyone so, was saying that it's all over. The narrative was the recession is coming. Right. Right. It is a discretionary product. Uh, and therefore, the combination of a, res- a, do- a coming recession and more ships coming online what is that? That pricing calls for, would collapse. Yeah. How did pricing go? Well, do? first of all, no, there's no recession. Right. Right. Uh, we've, we've, we're past that, I hope. Right. And the thing to understand, unlike the hotel industry, the uh, airline industry, our ships run full, and they run full all the time. So if you've got full ships all the time, and you can finance the brand new ones at interest rates of less than three percent over right. twelve years fixed, what would you do? You'd order more ships. That's why we have eleven ships on order coming online between now and 2027. Right. So I've got them ordered, but they come at a nice, even pace so I don't choke on the inventory. So I've got one coming at the end of this year, Sister to Bliss, right. your favorite ship. Well, the Bliss is beautiful, and we're going to talk about Norwegian that Norwegian Encore is even greater, because every ship that comes out is even greater than right, one before. Right. I got one coming next February, the most luxurious cruise ship ever built for the Regent brand, and the party continues. Okay, here's what I'm mystified by. I was on that ship and I was blown away. I could not believe it. Haven. I could not believe the racetrack. I couldn't believe the facilities. I couldn't believe all the technology you have. I couldn't believe all the uh, things you do. It seemed to mean nothing to these analysts. These analysts just seem to think it's just a place, a way to go from one place to another. If the Caribbean's got bad, well, uh, if the Caribbean had a storm, yeah. forget, forget you well, guys. Well, you know, most analysts, uh, most investors haven't been on a cruise ship. I think that's definitely. You know? I think that's um, true. And uh, I challenge them to come on board a cruise ship that'll change their mind. This is not your your grandfather's ships. The the, the new vessels coming online. Well, look, but, I, I got my, my daughter goes on cruises. That's I how I knew. I, know I had thought does. that. Are you kidding me? But yeah. she enlightened me that this is the greatest single way to have an Instagram uh, show in, in history. But what industry do you know that we have such great visibility into the future? So I turned the year having sold 65 percent right. of my current year inventory. I turned the year having nearly sold 35 percent of 2020 inventory in some of my brands. So the visibility is fantastic. The cash flow is great. Uh, the the cash flow generation potential, not potential, reality right. of this of this industry and of my company in particular is off the charts. And I think it's the w- single most misunderstood. Um, uh, variable in this whole equation. Well, I understand why. Can we give an example about why? I had thought that people, that there's some terrible news out of Turkey, uh, you know, geopolitical turmoil. And then I saw your bookings to Turkey and Eastern Mediterranean. Yeah. They're up. It's, it is hard to get your head around. Well, time heals all wounds. In 2016, yeah. the events that happened, uh, geopolitical, right, we right. all pulled out. Right. It's easy to pull out. It's fast. It's, it's complete. Right. And it takes a long time to stick your, uh, your toes in the water and come back slowly. So this year, we have 12 sailings that touch Turkey. Right. Next year, we've got 20. I'm now working on 21 itineraries. There's going to be a lot more. The good news is that those itineraries that touch Turkey are selling faster and at higher prices than those itineraries either before or after it. So the good news is Americans are willing to go back to Turkey. Okay, and how much uh, of yours made right now versus, say, the last year at this time and versus the year before? In terms of? Uh, how much yours made already. I mean, I'm trying oh. to get as, like, there's a secular way that people are booking. 
In other words, like two years ago, people didn't book ahead as much as they do now because they're not, they're afraid of missing. Look, we have three, three indicators of what the consumer is thinking. Okay. One is, are they booking further and further out? Right. The answer is yes, seven, eight months now. Okay. But the other one that's very, very uh, pertinent is those who booked eight or nine months ago and are cruising today, what are they doing on board spend? Are they going to the spa? Are they right. buying shirt right. excursions? Right. Are they going to the casino? And the answer is yes. Now, I wanted to ask you about sports betting. There's a lot of intrigue game sports betting. Can you do that one? You, you know, we're, we've been studying it. you got to get this. This it, is big. Yeah. I'm just seeing it just took off in the last three months. I think it'd be great for you guys because what happens is they used to be just bidding at the beginning of a game. Now they're going crazy with the intra game. You know, serve a lot of drinks and yeah. stuff like that. It could yeah. be good business. It could be. It could be. I'll look into it, Jim. Now, mobile. I'll give you a commission uh, if it pays off. No, no, it's all yours. <laughs> I, I, I like your industry so much. I do want to talk about what happens when young people go on your cruises, and what do you see? Do you see people taking pictures and posting? Instagram. Are they your greatest salespeople? Your greatest influencers? So, 25% of our business today in the Norwegian brand are millennials. Fastest growing, absolute, and in relative term. We are now building ships, with the understanding that. Instagram is a is something to deal with and we're actually creating Instagram venues so that when you get the urge they're going to go there and 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 that's the best publicity you can have people having fun um, value oriented the millennials right. value value yes and that's what the cruise industry is all about and then the final thing is is that I, I think that somehow these analysts don't get the notion of material spend versus experiential spend you were one of the first people to talk about it. This yeah. is an experience. It's treasured. Therefore, somewhat less uh, price sensitive than people understand. They want it. Yeah. Look, uh, the cruise industry is for everyone. The biggest seg segment of, the, of our customer base is still the boomers. And the boomers were infamous for being collectors of stuff. Yes. And, uh, but they've moved along. And, and they're no longer collecting stuff. They're collecting experiences as well. Maybe the Millennials taught the boomers a thing or two about uh, how to well, live life. Wouldn't surprise, but you taught us a thing or two because when we saw you, it was the height of when the analysts were downgrading and how wrong they were and how right you were. That's Frank Del Rio, he's Norwegian Cruise Lines president and CEO. This is one great investment, people. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.